winner is Daisy! Surprising absolutely no one, Daisy made a clean sweep of all of the boards, getting first place in every single one of them. Because it was destiny and required of us, kind of. Detailed results, we got a bunch of corns, one away from 200, so sad. Uh, those are most coins at any time, we got uh, Wario, has the most blue spaces and most red spaces. There's only one red spaces in our board? Okay. Uh, no happening spaces, uh, just like in Boo's Haunted Bash, they're very hard to find. One chance time. One Bowser, two battles, and a lot of singing mushrooms, and no springs. But with that, we have cleared every single board in Mario Party 4. So what's left to do exactly? Well, let's find out. Hey Daisy, not bad. <laughs> Now, I'll give back your presents like I said. And now, before we face off Bowser in battle to save all of the presents, let's go ahead and face them off in all the mini games that we never got to play because the Bowser spaces were very, very annoying in this game. Because we just kept on getting Koba Kid over and over and over again, and it was really lame. But yeah, there are three Bowser minigames that you could get when landing on Bowser's face and having Bowser show up, but it's very rare as I show off. So, we're gonna be playing all three of them right now, starting off with Darts of Doom! And yeah, this minigame is so sinisterly evil that it doesn't even have a regular tutorial screen! Oh. <laughs> Welcome! Well, this time, the Bowser game is... Darts of Doom! Wanna hear the rules? Now, it's actually very singing funny how the rules are explained in these games, so I am very much looking forward to reading these. As soon as you start the rules, Bowser just like lays on his arm, he's just like waiting, looks all sassy. Alright, listen up, weaklings, I'm gonna explain the rules of this game. So no snoozing! Throw three darts at once and try to get a lot of points. A lot of points. But the board will be spinning, so it won't be easy. Round and round she goes. The three cursors show where the darts will hit, so pay attention. Three curses? Watch the cursor's movement, and press A to throw. A, that's the green one. Back in the old days, I always used to call it the green button and the red button, but I would call X and Y, X and Y. It was just that uh, A was the green button, B was the red button, and then the control stick was the squiggly thing. I still sometimes call it that just because it's funny, but... Whatever, and I called it the C-Stick, no problem, it was just the C-Stick and the squiggly thing. I don't know, I didn't make much sense back then. The sum of the three areas your darts hit is your total score. If you can get any, the player with the least points gets a back rub! <laughs> what? No, they get roasted! Like chestnuts on an open fire. So, here we go! Rawr, if you make them play here, they'll hit me! Yikes, that's gonna hurt! Oh, one more thing. If you get a bullseye, you're toast. Yeah, it's actually bad to get the bullseye because it's got Bowser's face on it. He doesn't want a dart going through his face. So, just gotta throw wherever you think you'll get a lot of points. Make sure you don't hit Bowser. Uh, oh, I missed points altogether, but I got 100 points. Okay, that seems pretty decent. Now, up next is Mario. And wow, that spin was so incredibly epic, it knocked all the darts off the dartboard. Really hoping someone gets the Bowser Bullseye. 191 points? Okay, apparently I wasn't impressive in the slightest. What matters is that you just don't get last. As long as you don't get last in this game, you'll be safe. Uh, Peach did a good job. 130 points! Jeez, alright Wario, I'm always counting on you to don't miss. Show him you still got it, even though you got a new voice actor in this game. He's got... Oh, come on, Wario, you were, like, taunting me over and over again, like, had a SEVEN POINTS?! <laughs> okay, I'll forgive you for that, like, for not getting the bullseye. We have a loser! 
Like, this thing is funny. Like, he had this curses over the bullseye over and over again, and just never threw it, but, like, he gets seven points on an open fire. He shoots, he scorches! And alright, I guess because I'm a sucker for showing off every bit of dialogue, if you get a bullseye, this is what happens. Let's see if we can get all three in there. Wah! That wasn't even close to getting all three, but whatever. You've done it now! Nice shot, bucko! That is if you meant to hit my face! I didn't even hit your face, hit like the side of it. Shouldn't that be like extra skill? On an open fire, okay, yeah, it's basically the same. Did Peach, did Peach just run through me? I don't know. I guess you could say I'm pushing up daisies. Now my favorite Bowser minigame is Fruits of Doom. Yes, so evil and epic Fruits of Doom. Whoa, welcome. Well, this time the Bowser game is... What the Fruits of Doom? Electricity goes to his crotch. <laughs> Wanna hear the rules? Yes, I do. Alright, listen up, weaklings. I'm gonna explain the rules of this game. So no snoozing! Master Bowser will say which fruits he wants to eat. He's very particular. Then you guys must find the right fruit and bring it to him. And don't mess up. Stand in front of the fruit and press A to grab it. Yeah, press A, you simpletons. If you bring a fruit that Master Bowser didn't ask for, or if you bring more than the number he asked for... I love this part then things might get a wee bit warmer for you. Yeah, like a London broil. <laughs> now let's get started. Let's get started. Now I want to see Kobukin and Rosanna Pancino team up. I am so very hungry. You wigglings, bring fruit to, sat to sat satiate my the mighty Koopa King. What refreshing flavor do I long for? Strawberry, strawberry, strawberry. Oh, what uh, the fruit? It was just a bunch of strawberries. I couldn't even see that. I saw like a melon in there. Now bring them quickly. Okay, so you can see how this can get very difficult. Gee, I wonder if I should give him a strawberry. And it becomes magically smaller. So there will be a loser eventually, just so whoever's the first person to mess up, they get roasted. Usually the consequences for losing a Bowser minigame, sometimes he'll take all your items, he'll take half your coins, sometimes he'll take all your coins, and I think he could take a star every now and again. I'm hoping that Mario just does not take... Uh, or anyone doesn't take strawberries just because it's the only thing I know that he actually wants. So I have three strawberries and I know there was a melon in there. Up in, and once that's taken care of, then I am completely blind. I tried looking back on the Elgato and it, I couldn't see it any better either. Delish! Next is Peach. Unfortunately, there's no Peach here for her to give him. And No, Peach, don't do it! Ah, oh, god darn it, you jerk. So she take, of course, Peach is taking one of my guesses, because that's all I know. Strawberries is the only fruit I know. I like how he just stares at it longingly. And Wario's going to, come on, don't you dare do it. Get over there, yeah, give him an orange. It'd be funny if I didn't even want an orange. Wrong. Yummy! I just like how it's like the awkward pause of him just staring vigorously at the fruit. And this is the last strawberry that I know he definitely wants. He could have wanted more than three, but I don't really know. I like how the clouds look in the background. They look really nice. <laughs> just admiring the atmosphere. Yummy! He's so happy! Now, please don't anyone take that melon, because I it's my only safety net. And of course- okay, oh, oh, oh! I think it forces you into it so you can't just like, run out of time and be like, you're taking too long, you lose! So, let's see if he wants an orange. Stares at it. Oh, he grunts at it. Oh! Oh! Yeah, he fakes you out. It's so stinking funny. Like, Bowser's just the best. Uh, Peach, what she's gonna do? What she's gonna do? Okay, whatever. Uh, she gets another orange. Okay. Getting a lot of vitamin C in Bowser's appetite. Well, then again, this isn't like all fruit, vitamin C, another thing, but I don't know. Delish! I wish someone would give him a banana so we could recreate that, like, image of Iwata holding the bananas. Uh, here goes... grapes? Got any grapes?
Uh, does this count as just one grape because of- uh-oh. No! And Koba Kid dances with the grapes, and geez, Wario got roasted. I like how Koba Kid's like trying to cool down the fire. So, let's see if Wario could get out of a Bowser mini game without getting roasted for once. We have one more to go through before the final battle. Balloon of Doom! Whoa, welcome! Well, this time the Mauser game will be... Balloon of Doom! Ooh, that looked fancy. Wanna hear the rules? Yes, indeed, indeed. Oh, you and your rules! Alright, listen up, weaklings, I'm gonna explain the rules of this game. So now snoozy! Blow up Master Bowser's balloon, real big like. Yeah, raise the roof. Just ground pound on this pump over here to inflate the balloon. Whoomp! Press A to jump, and A again to do an air ground pound, okay. Jump and press A. The higher you jump, the more air gets pumped into the balloon. More air means more Bowser. But if you overinflate the balloon, or don't pump at all... Oh, I know, I know! You roast! Like a marshmallow at a campfire. So get pumping! Weehaw! My face is gonna be huge! So we must create the floating disembodied head of Bowser without blowing it up, basically. First person to blow it up... Okay, the only person would blow, up, blow it up because you can't get the pieces in the air back together or something like that. Uh, you'll get roasted, basically. Then it'll become a hot air balloon, her her her. Mario goes ahead and blows it up. I feel like the limit to how big you can make the balloon changes every time you play it, so you can't really rely on past playthroughs to help you. It's just like, use your best judgment when looking at a balloon, but then again, that's already way bigger than any normal balloon should be able to inflate. Let's see, Wario, okay. Usually just in the first few rounds you can do the full blown ground pound without worrying about it. When it gets like super inflated, then the characters will start ducking, so that makes you uh, begin to worry and see that you're getting close to blowing it up, so that's a little bit of a hint you can use. And yeah, you can actually see Koba Kid uh, stepped back a little bit, so there is some visual cues telling you that you're getting closer and closer to making it blow up. Which is kind of interesting. Alright, we got through two cycles. Time for Daisy! And Cub Kid backs up even further. He's like, any minute now! No one else is ducking though, so- Okay, here comes the ducking. I can feel it! Are you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? Uh, this might be kind of dangerous for me. Oh jeez, Cub Kid backs up even further. He's behind the column. And the other Koba Kid is no longer fanning him. Oh, this is gonna be bad for me. Or not, Wario! Three strikes for Wario and he's out. It's gonna blow! Jeez, poor Wario. <laughs> I guess that's why he never got to be a playable character in a Mario Party LP. Oh well. And with that, that is every minigame in Mario Party 3. Except for the finale. Let's go back into story mode and take down Bowser once and for all. Roar, you gullible fool! Yeah! <laughs> You won't be getting these presents! Quite as easily as you thought! You can have them if you can get to me. It's hopeless, but do your best anyway. Yeah! Don't think you'll get in so easily. That's right, things are gonna get hot. Touch the magma and say goodbye! Night night! Yeah. This is the final battle in the game against the Bowser Cube of Doom, as I will now call it. What you gotta do is get to Bowser without dying, basically. If you hit the fire, you lose a heart. If you go in the lava, it's game over. So that's what you gotta do, basically. Now this is something that makes me very, very angry in Mario Party The Top 100, of course. As if I didn't have enough complaints about it already, they made a change to this in Mario Party The Top 100. 
This is actually the final battle of the minigame coaster, the 100 minigame challenge that you find in Mario Party Top 100, the only thing that you could even consider to be a story mode. Wahaha! Welcome, but you stop right here, puny one. You will go no further. Can you solve the riddle of this room? And don't try to move the puzzle pieces with a ground pound. You creep! You cheap little... Eek. So yeah, you gotta go to the ground pound to move these things, but this is what infuriates me. Right now, we're trying to fight the two Koba kids who are uh, fighting us right now, and we're making a pattern of them. But in Mario Party of the Top 100, they're replaced with Bowser Jr. They erased an iconic character from Mario Party history and replaced it with his stupid son that nobody likes and who should not have a place in my Mario Party compilation video game! Also, that game is just terrible and you shouldn't buy it. <laughs> Drat, sorry, Master Bowser. It's his fault. I'm sorry, but like, when I saw that they replaced Koba Kid with Bowser Jr. in this board, in this game, right in the end, I was stinking livid. As if I didn't hate the game enough already. Like, I could go on an entire singing rant about how much that game is horrible. But whatever. I'm just gonna get through here. I'm gonna take out all of our anger on Bowser in the final battle. I was hoping to go through here without getting any damage, but whatever. Quiet! Yeah, I know it's getting really stinking loud. I apologize, Bowser. I guess I'll have to do this by myself. Thank your lucky stars you made it this far. Also, that's a really cool stinking thing. I think also in Top 100, they replace his cool stinking vehicle right here with the Koopa Clown Cart. As someone who loves clowns, like, excessively so, I've mentioned a million times throughout my LPs, I hated the Koopa Clown Cart from the beginning. It's just, it makes no sense for Bowser. And, like, supposedly the Koopalings are based off of clowns, but I never saw it. And, like, that's such a cool looking... I like his fire boomerang still going around. Like, that's such a cool looking vehicle for him to have the black spikes and everything, the black shell of doom. Like, it looks cool! But no, they gave him a clown car for some stupid reason. I never understood it. Now I'll bury you. Arg, I'm not going to stand for this. Now prepare to meet your doom. So what you gotta do now is ground pound on three of these things to make a triangle. Once you do that, everywhere within the triangle is going to become electrified and you could go ahead and uh, have Bowser take some damage. Uh, first he's gonna th throw his fire boomerang of death. Uh, just. I don't want to make sure because, like, you don't want to save this one, uh, the one in the back for last, just because it's very hard to see where you're going, and it makes me very scared. Okay, cool. Okay, whoa. Uh, I guess I ran out of time. I didn't even know that was a thing you could do. Uh, hit this one, and now keep Bowser in the square or in the triangle. And then, oh, of course, not. just didn't want to get electro electrocuted myself, but I didn't really have a choice. He could also ram at you, which is really scary. So be sure to uh, watch out for that. And there you go, we gotta do that five times. So, it's really cool, like, that they started integrating story modes into Mario Party games, because it's just something you wouldn't really expect, in case you're wondering, you know, you don't care about the spikes on the side of this button. Uh, hello, hello, hello! Uh, it's just that, something that you wouldn't really expect, and I like that they keep on adding, like, there's stories that, like, a lot of people, I'm sure, didn't, haven't really experienced, so I'm sure this is a new experience for someone watching right now, because who plays the story mode of a Mario Party game? Just something you may not have known about before, maybe you, uh, know about it now and you like it, and you think it's cool. I certainly think it's cool, so hopefully you do too. This is not nearly the most epic story mode boss fight in a Mario Party game though. I'll save that for a later time. But for now, let's just enjoy where we are in here and now. Uh, hit that. Uh, was he in enough applications? Oh, he is? Cool. Okay, hit that. Hit this one. My nose is super itchy. I don't know if let's take that's Bowser's- Oh, Jesus Christ! Don't hear- Okay, go, go, go! Okay, as long as I don't fall off. Uh, go over here. Come on. Uh, didn't hurt him. Okay, hit that one. Hit that one. Oh, oh god, oh god, I don't want to fall into the lava! Oh jeez. Uh, just go over here now. And... There you go. Just one more hit and this battle will be finished. Oh jeez, oh jeez, oh jeez, 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 Get out of here, get out of here, get out of here, get out of here! Oh jeez. Uh, this one? Does that even work? I don't know. Uh, are you gonna go down, Bowser? Yes, you are! Nobody stops the birthday girl.
That was probably the most unepic thing to say when finding a final boss in Minion Beyond History. Well, at least I switched it up from this battle is over! And look at her just laughing there. How did this happen? I lost to Daisy? I've had enough. This is a present from Master Bowser. I'm sure that he dropped it or accidentally left it behind. So just take it, alright? And... He didn't take your other presents either. Maybe Master Bowser really is a good guy. Nah. Happy birthday, Daisy! Kobe Kid, I love you! I hope you're playable in the Mario Party game one day! I hope you return! You got a Bowser teapot! Yes, and of course, Bowser's that one guy who shows up to a birthday party and gives the friend a present that is just like a picture of himself or something like that. But yes, we have gotten all of our presents back. Or I guess we never lost them to begin with. But now, our present room is fully complete. Even though it was complete from the beginning, we were just taking the presents out of the room and putting them back into the room because I already had a completed save file. It was really super awkward. I'm not so good with mushy stuff like this, but... Happy birthday. I'm, like, happy and stuff. Now you've received presents from everyone! Surprise! There's actually just one more! Yeah. Who wants to congratulate you? Can you guess who? There's someone else! And that is Mario Party 4. Kikuchi! Relative of Makoto Kikuchi? No. Oh my god. It's so weird because like I just sort of finished Mario Party 3 on the channel. Now I'm already finished with Mario Party 4. And this was a very different experience, that's for sure, from the past three Mario Party LPs. It was a much more chill experience and a much more lonely experience because I didn't have any co-coms. But I absolutely adore this Mario Party. It's my second favorite Mario Party game of all time. One I have so many good memories of, and it was just a fun adventure from beginning to end, and I I just really gotta appreciate those projects. It's like, wasn't anything too crazy, nothing too amazing or spectacular or whatever. It was just an overall good time, and I appreciated it. I'm glad that I just got to unwind and have a good experience, because Year 7 definitely needs to have more of those, because Year 6 was filled with a lot of not-so-good experiences, but... I'm just happy that this all turned out very well, and it was a very chill, enjoyable LP. That's what I was expecting it to be. Mario Party 4 was just one I wanted to ha talk a lot about with everything that I knew about this game, because it was actually something I was actually informative on for once. And I hope you enjoyed it. I know a lot of people enjoy the guests that I bring on, but hopefully um, I was good enough for you this time around and stuff, maybe, possibly. But yeah, you actually get to see the epic backstory of how these regular NPCs became the show hosts for this board, in case you care, I guess. But yeah, it's cool that you get to see these things, you get to see where they got the tickets and the costumes and stuff, it's really cool. 
but yeah, this has been an LP. I was not expecting to have Mario Party 4 and Mario Land be the same LP. Originally, they were going to be separate Let's Plays, and they would just be done at the same time around Jesus' birthday. But uh, scheduling didn't allow that to happen, as well as uh, originally I was going to have Cave Story and Ikachan be separate LPs, but I wound up separating them because I needed to get to LP number 60 before year 6 ended because of the halfway point thing. And Boo looks very bald right now, I don't know why. Just, when he has the coat on and not the hat, then I think he looks bald. But when he's completely naked, he's fine. I don't get it. But um, yeah, it's just that um, originally I was going to have Cave Story and Ikachan be, the, be its own LP, but then they wound up being separated. So to make up for that, I wound up making Mario Land and uh, Mario Party 4 its own LP. Which makes less sense, but whatever, this is my channel, I can do whatever the heck I want. Uh, Mario Land might very well be the last 2D Mario game you see on my channel, so it's kind of, um, it's historical in that sense. And then Mario Party 4, it's the beginning of the GameCube Mario Parties, which is another historical milestone that we just made on the channel. So it's really cool just seeing all the progress we're making. We're halfway done. Like I said, I have no plans to do Mario Parties 9 and 10. Only the first eight Mario Parties are the ones I want to do. And we're halfway done with them. It's crazy that we've already done that. So, I'm just going to say right now, of course I've been doing one Mario Party LP per year, which I'm going to continue doing, but my next Let's Play, my next Mario Party Let's Play will not be Mario Party 5. I'm actually going to be skipping it and going to Mario Party 6. The reason for this is because Mario Party 5 is my first Mario Party game, my first Mario game, my first GameCube game, and the game that got me into video games as a whole. It means so stinking much to me for so many reasons, and I have... Want, I want to make sure it's as good as it could possibly be. So I'm going to be saving that as my last Mario Party Let's Play. So next year we're going to be doing Mario Party 6, then after that will be 7, then 8, and then we will finish off this adventure with Mario Party 5. Hope you're okay with that, with just making things a little bit out of order, but I think it's going to make the overall finished product very well worth it, because I have a lot of things I want to show off in Mario Party 5, and Mario Party 6 is probably my least favorite out of the Hudson Mario Party, so it'd be kind of weird to follow up my favorite Mario Party with a, one of my least favorite ones, so uh, hopefully you'll enjoy what I have in store for Mario Party 6. Maybe we'll return to having guests on board because I got nothing good to say about Mario Party 6, so we'll see where that goes. But for now, we are done here. Sort of, kind of. We still have some bonus stuff for Mario Party 4 that I need to show off, so stay tuned for that, and I guess stay tuned for everything else that's going on, on the channel. Not sure when everything's getting released in what order because I'm still uh, trying to get back into the swing of things. But right now I'm just having fun with what I'm uploading and uh, with what I'm recording. And I hope you guys enjoy it when it finally gets uploaded. But for now, our party has come to a close. Thank you all for watching my Let's Play of Mario Party 4, a.k.a. Daisy Party. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see all of you next Let's Play. Sweet dreams.